Good afternoon. Welcome to EduSet Network. Friend, as you know, this week we have organized series of lecture on population growth. In the last three lectures, we talked about the different uh, theories mm -hmm. given by uh, Malthus, Ricardo, and Marx. We also did a comparative study, and we tried to understand the, what is the relation between uh, population and uh, resources, because these all theories which so far we have discussed that talk about the relation between population and resources. Now today we move further and we try to understand demographic transition model. This theory does not talk about the <coughs> relation between uh, population and resources, rather it talks about the demo uh, population is growing because of the demographical change like uh, difference between birth rate and uh, death rate and uh, this th uh, demographic change is different uh, stages. So, we will try to understand the demographic transition theory at, uh, and for discussion on this very topic, <coughs> we have in the studio Dr. Abhay Kumar. He is an um, uh, expert in uh, population studies and has done uh, PhD from Center for the Study of the Regional Development Jawaharlal Nehru University on the population studies and he has a specialization in this and published a number of uh, report, research paper, uh, project reports and book in the area of uh, population and others uh, diverse issues like livelihood, workers, poverty and um, poverty and human development and he has presented a number of paper in different <coughs> uh, national and international uh, uh, conferences and uh, uh, Dr. Kumar is also a member of technical advisory committee of uh, Indian uh, Association of Parliamentarians on uh, population and development and his academic research is also by, uh, wide uh, so he keeps <coughs> it going on and uh, he is a visiting faculty of different uh, universities like Jamia Millia Islamia University New Delhi Institute of Food Security as uh, Central Training Institute of FCI of India and also visiting faculty in the Bibigiri National Labor in, uh, Institute no uh, Noida so I think his knowledge and personal experience while doing uh, research and presenting paper at different uh, <coughs> national and international fora. He has uh, d uh, got a large, uh, uh, not only theoretical uh, knowledge, but also practical as, uh, uh, problems and practical uh, knowledge. So I think uh, his knowledge and experience will help us to understand this uh, uh, topic, demographic transition model, and will give insights so on your behalf. I welcome him for insert lecture. Welcome, you, sir. Now over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Amendaji. Uh, <coughs> friends, good afternoon. Uh, uh, in the series of lecture on population theories that we have been conducting from the last three days, today is the fourth day, and in the last three lectures, I have tried to cover the theory given by Malthus, Marx, and Ricardo. And uh, after that, uh, I also discussed about the new Malthusian population growth theory, and then I also discussed about some of the optimistic theory given by uh, uh, scholars like Esther Bosrup, uh, <coughs> Julian Simon and Donald Bog. So all these theories we have discussed uh, in, in, in our last few lectures. And in all these lectures we have tried to cl uh, classify these lectures first into two categories of the pessimistic and the optimistic theory. And then now <coughs> the basic uh, principle behind all these lectures were that these theories tried to see the population growth in terms of its relationship between the resources. Till now we have seen starting from Malthus to Marx and Ricardo as well as all the new Malthusian proponents such as Paul Ehrlich, such as uh, Lester Brown, such as Meadows. And all these people have tried to see the population growth in terms of its relationship between the, uh, between the uh, resources as well as the environment. Now, today I am going to discuss about the demographic transition theory. This demographic transition theory is different from what we have discussed till now. Demographic transition is a truly demographic theory which says that uh, a society undergoes a transition from its pre-modern time to the modern time during different transitions and these transitions takes place 
and it affects the population growth as well as the birth rate and death rate of that particular society. So basically in two sense, in demographic terms, we understand that population growth is the difference between the birth rate and the death rate. This demographic transition theory has also tried to understand the growth of the population in terms of the birth rate and death rate as well as it has also tried to see the transition of the population growth from its ancient time to the modern time in different phases. So we have a different stages in demographic transition. So <clears throat> to uh, just to elaborate it nicely, we can say that demographic transition is a change of population over time. <clears throat> so what does this theory says that the it is a logical succession of historical phases through which every population passes in the movement towards modernity. So this is what the demographic transition main, you know, uh, uh, demographic transition, this is what demographic transition theory tells us. This demographic transition was given by a famous demographer Warren Thompson in 1929, though later on several other scholars such as Nottestein and many others have added to this theory and they have tried to refine this theory better. So <clears throat> uh, basically to speak it in other words, we can say that it, it is a transition from high birth and death rates to low birth and death rates as a country develops from a pre-industrial phase to an industrialized economic system or you can say the modern phase. So this is what the transition of demography that is being discussed in the demographic transition theory. Thompson observed, the Thompson main proponent of this, the, uh, this theory, he observed the changes in birth and death rates in industrialized societies and his study was basically focused on the industrialized society and he tried to see the transition of the uh, demographic in the span of 200 years. So in the span of 200 years in the industrialized society he collected data and tried to plot those data and then he tried to see that whether the society progresses from one stage to another and that is what he has tried to put forward in his famous theory called demographic transition theory. Later on as I said Frank Nottestein and many other have updated this model. Now what are the postulations behind this theory. Thompson said that basically there are three postulations behind this theory. First that in demographic transition mortality comes before the decline in fertility. Decline in mortality comes before the decline in fertility. So this was the first proposition put forward by Thompson. Secondly he said that after the decline in mortality takes place subsequently or eventually the fertility also declines. So this is his second postulation. Thirdly, he said that socio-economic transformations of a society keeps on taking place simultaneously as this birth rate and death rate, the decline in birth rate and death rate takes place in the society. So he said that both as and when the birth rate and death rate declines in a society, similarly this social and economic transformation also takes place in that particular society and that is what he tried to explain by his model. Now according to him, there are basically four stages. Many of the <coughs> theorists have tried to put it in three stages, many of them have tried to put it in four stages. Few scholars have also tried to see the stage 5. So basically it has got four stages and there is another stage called stage 5. Now what is, what are these stages? To give you in a snapshot, just to give you a cursory look about all these five stages, the first stage tells you that in the first stage of a demographic transition in a society, it is largely having fluctuation in the birth rate and death rate and as a result what happens there is a slow population growth rate that is taking place in the society. In the second stage high birth rate is there but second stage experiences the decline in the death rate and 
Therefore, as and when the decline in the death rate takes place and since the birth rate remains higher, then because of that rapid population growth takes place in that particular society. I will come in detail about all the characteristics and the you know the factors that is leading to different stages in our my next slides, but I am here giving you a brief snapshot of what all these stages tells us. Now, in stage 3, the decline in birth rate and low, rate, uh, low death rate, we have an experience of declining birth rate also in stage 3 and death rate has already declined. Now, because of this what happens? The population growth for the first time starts declining. So, this is what the stage 3 tells us. In stage 4 what happens? Both birth rate and death rate declines to a level that we find the very slow population growth rate in the society. And ultimately in stage 5 we see that the both birth rate and death rates have got stabilized and maybe it has got into negative uh, and it may result into the negative population growth rate as well or say for the example it, it may lead to the zero population growth or negative population growth. So, these are the five different stages of the demographic transition theory. Now, I will try to explain each stages with their characteristics and factors or say regions behind that particular stage with suitable graphs demonstrating these stages. So, starting from stage 1. Now, to give you a snapshot of how these stages is taking place, I can show you here a graph where you can see that the red line that you can see on the screen is basically a crude death rate, whereas the blue line is the crude birth rate and the black line is the total population. So, you can see here that in the initial phase which is stage 1 which is also known as pre-modern stage, you can see the fluctuating birth and death rates together. So, both are at the higher level and it is in a fluctuating states as a result what happens? You have a low population base. Now, at the second stage what we can see is that the death rate declines substantially and the birth rate continues to be on the same level. So, the death rate declines and birth rate since birth rate remains at that particular stage, we can see the gap between the birth rate and death rate and this is what is called the increasing population phase which is called the fast you know uh, expanding so, uh, demographic stage. In stage 3 as you can see birth rate has also shown the declining terms for the first time in this particular transition model and death rate is already declining. So, there we can see the gap between the death rate and birth rate narrowing down and that is why the population growth rate, the fast population growth rate that is taking place in the stage 2 has started declining in stage 3. So, this is what is there in the uh, uh, demographic transition model stage 3. Now, at the fourth stage what happens? It is a post industrial age stage where we can see both birth rate and death rates decline to a very low level. But by that time we can see that the population has already you know uh, grown in such a huge manner that it has reached you can see the population was earlier at the lower level and the birth rate and death rate were higher. But the at the last stage 4 we can see that the birth rate and death rate both have gone lower, but still we have a very large population base. But at the same time we can see that at the stage 4 the population has started declining or it has started you know. Uh, having this um, uh, zero population uh, growth. So, this is what is described in this particular growth model. Now, I will come each stage one by one. <coughs> now, in this particular graph also I have uh, uh, as you can see this graph also tells you the different phases of the demographic transition where in one you can see that the first stage is high stationary stage, the second is early expanding stage, the third is late expanding stage and fourth is low stationary stage. So, these are the four different stages and they are declining stage at the stage 5. And at the bottom of the graph you can see it has given different characteristics. Uh, characteristics of this, these uh, different stages and these characteristics I will also discuss in, in our next slides. But here to give you a brief background you can see the red line is the population uh, total population whereas the blue line is the death rate and the lighter blue line the upper line that is called the birth rate you can see there. And you can see at the first stage you have a death rate and 
birth rate both at a fluctuating level, but very high. At the second stage, we see the rapid decline in the death rate, but birth rate remaining on the same platform. Again, at stage 3, you can see that the death rate is continuously declining, and but birth rate has started declining for the first time in stage 3. And then in stage 4, we can see that both birth rate and death rate declines to an equal level at a very low level. And then at stage 5, we might even experience a decrease or negative population growth rate or even the zero population growth rate. Each stages are characterized by certain features, which I am coming to discuss in our next slide. Uh, as I told you that the first stage, the demographic, first stage of the demographic transition is also known as high fluctuating or stationary stage. In this particular stage, what happens? We have a very high birth rate of more than 35 per thousand, and we also have a very high crude death rate of more than 35 per thousand. So, both birth rate and death rate are very high. As a result, what happens? Since both birth rate and death rates are very high, the chances of childhood survival is very dismal. Since the chances of the uh, childhood survival are dismal, People are not very sure that if they are going to control their population, they will be having children. So, what they, there is no incentive to stop the population growth or the birth rate. And that is why you see that the mortality is also very high as well as the fertility is also very high in this particular stage. So, we can, uh, so uh, this particular stage is also marked with outbreaks of infectious diseases. So, there are several infectious diseases and mind you this particular a stage we must consider that we are talking about the 1800, 18th century some in the European societies. So, you can understand the Thomson was referring to this is during the 1800 and that too in the European societies. So, at that particular point of time, there was no advance in, advancement in the medical sciences, there was no advancement in the you know the hygienic uh, knowledge. And that is why the infectious diseases were also very common in the European society. And as a result, what happens? The outbreaks of the infectious diseases were very common. And because of the outbreak of these infectious diseases, what happens? The childhood survival chances or the childhood survival rate was also very dismal. So, this rate was also characterized by the high. Uh, you know, uh, uh, outbreaks of the infectious disease. Together, we can also see that uh, since the birth rate is also very high and the death rate is also very high, so the number of people are getting, you know, uh, are uh, getting born or number of people are dying, the difference between the two are very minimal and as a result, what happens? The population is also not growing. So, the number of people that are taking birth the similar number of people are also dying. So, the difference between the birth rate and death rate are very minimal and because of that, the population does not grow and population is at a very low level. So, that is why we have a very slow population growth as well as the population base is also very low. And that is why this particular stage is known as high stationary stage because the both birth rate, death rate and population growth are somewhat at the stationary stage. We also call it as high fluctuating stage. Now, this particular society in, in this stage 1, largely this particular stage is characterized by agrarian society. So, as you can see that during the stage 1, whichever society is experiencing stage 1, largely that particular stage is agrarian society. So, and also since the population grow, growth is very less and because of that the population densities are also very low. Now, in this particular graph you can see that I have tried to show just stage 1 here and you can see that the birth rate and death rate are both fluctuating as well as very high. Whereas, the total population is at the bottom you can see there and as a result what happens? Since the birth rate and death rates are high and there is no difference between the birth rate and death rates and that is why the total population is also at a very low level. Now, in this particular stage to continue with the characteristics of this particular stage, uh, let me tell you this particular stage is also having a very low level of productivity in its production system. This particular stage also have a very large size of families and it was considered as an asset. 
because they have a more manpower and they can you know uh, employ more and more uh, manpower. So, this particular stage is also characterized by large size families and then this particular stage is also having a very low expectancy of life at birth. So, the people those who are taking birth have a very few chances to cross the age of 45 or 50 years at that particular point of time. Why? Because they were not getting the you know uh, uh, they were not you know equipped with the uh, good medical knowledge, know-how and other medical uh, infrastructures. Now, this particular stage is therefore, also known as the pre-industrial and pre-modern stage, where the technical know-how was lacking, the urban development was almost nil, uh, illiteracy was there, illiteracy was very rampant, people were not knowing to how to read and uh, write. Uh, and this particular stage was somewhere during the 18th century and this was true in almost all the societies during the 18th century even in the western world. So, this particular stage was largely known as the Malthusian stalemate. Now, why, what was the reason of this high birth rate, high death rate and the lower population base? Basically, at that particular point of time, the death rates were high because of the diseases, famine, poor diet, poor hygiene and a very little medical science or lack of knowledge of disease prevention and cure and occasional food shortage. So, these were the reasons why that particular stage was characterized by high birth rate, high death rate as well as the very stationary population rate. Also, at that particular point of time, if children were taking play, uh, taking birth, that means their parents were not very convinced that their children is going to survive and therefore, there was no motivation to, you know, control the population, there was no motivation to control the fertility. So, that is how this stage 1 has several characteristics. Now, coming to the stage 2, so friends, we have seen that is stage 1. Now, we are moving to the stage 2. Now, this stage 2 have are also known as this stage 2 is also known as early expanding stage. Why? Because in this stage what happens? You start seeing the decline in the death rate and a very substantial decline in the death rate you can see in the graph that the blue line which is the bottom line the death rate line has all of a sudden steeply declined to a lower level whereas, the birth rate that remains at a higher level. So, you can see that the birth rate level at this at the stage 2 is still somewhere around 30 to 35, but death rate has gone somewhere near to 15 per thousand. So, that is the <coughs> characteristics of this particular stage 2. Now, uh, as a result since the de death rate has declined, but birth rate is still taking place. So, what happens there is a gap between the birth rate and death rate and that is why you experience a sudden increase in the population. So, there is a spurt of population growth taking place at that particular stage, stage 2. Now, because of that what happens the population you can see the population takes the J shape the typical J shape that I have been discussing in the last few lectures, you can see the total population is increasing at the rate of the J shape. So, this is how the stage 2, you know, uh, stage 2 characterizes. Now, what happens? What are the different characteristics of this stage 2 and why the decline in mortality that is taking place? This is basically that the female literacy and public health education programs has improved during that particular stage. So, in a society the both literacy as well as the female literacy and health, health education program all these things have experienced a you know uh, experience an increase in their uh, proportion and as a result what happens that reduces the mortality rate. So, because of that since the reduction of the mortality rate takes place, but at that particular point of time reduction of mortality rate is still taking place and that is why the people are still not sure because the transition takes little time. So, people are still not very sure that the, since the mortality has started taking up very soon, people are still not very sure that they are going to control their fertility. So, that is why the, fert, that is why the fertility rate still goes on. What are the other characteristics of this particular stage? 
you can see since the mortality has declined down, fertility rate remains higher. As a result, what happens? You have more and more number of children taking place which is not dying now. Earlier, the children taking birth were dying, now they have stopped dying. So, as a result, what happens? You have an increasing youth population in the population pyramid. Now, this increasing youth population leads to high fertility rate. Now, this is another again relationship. Since you have a higher number of children taking birth and surviving, you have a youth population, higher youth population, which will again enter into the uh, reproductive system. And as a result, what happens? You will have experience more and more population growth, because now more and more people are experiencing the, uh, uh, experiencing the, the fertility increase. So, this process of having more children, having more youth population and more and more youth population getting into the reproductive age period leads to a population e explosion. And that is why this stage 2 is characterized by population explosion stage or we also call it an early expanding stage. And as we know this stage, the population explosion is not taking because the fertility has gone higher, but taking because the death rate has declined. So, this is the basic characteristics of this, this particular stage that since the mortality has declined and that is why the population growth has increased. That is how the fertility, the, the, the difference between the fertility and mortality has is leading to the population growth. So, this is what is the characteristics of this stage 2. Now, life expectancy since the medical know-how, the hygienic know-how, medical science improvement, all these things improves and as a result what happens? The life expectancy at birth also improves in this particular stage too. Now, you can see this particular uh, graph of Sweden, where you can see this is an actual population uh, birth rate, death rate depiction on the graph of the Sweden during uh, a period of 1735 to 2000. So, here you can see that the red line is the crude death rate and blue line is the crude birth rate. So, uh, here as you can see that uh, as I told earlier, the change in the death rate is taking place faster than the change in the birth rate. You can see it, the uh, true depiction of the uh, birth rate and death rate of the Sweden. Now, birth rate is also subsequently declining. But one thing that you can mark here that the way we were seeing the population explosion in the demographic graphs earlier, we are not experiencing a very large you know gap between the fertility and death rate uh, in Sweden. So, so, this is a specific characteristics of the Sweden. Similarly, if you try to see the, the demographic change in the 2 300 years of time of different societies, you may experience a little bit difference in their pattern but largely the pattern of demographic transition will prevail. So, this is what is there in this stage 2. Uh, just to explain it further, I have also tried to show an population pyramid here, where you can see that the blue line is the male female population represented on different age group of 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 5, 14. This is the age group on which we have tried to show the proportion of the population, where the left hand side is the male population and the right hand side is the female population. This is a population pyramid of Mexico during 1980, where you can see that at the 0 to 4 age group or 5 to 9 age group or 10 to 14 age group, you can see that the population size is bigger. So, this is a typical of the stage 2 population pyramid which you can experience here, that you have a larger population base at the bottom, whereas you will have a very tapering upper part of the population pyramid. So, this is the second stage characteristics of the population pyramid. Now, what are the regions of the stage 2? The reasons for the stage 2 is basically improvement in medical care that has further improved in stage 2 as we have said that the medical care has improved. There is a significant improvements in water supply, sewage, food handling and general personal hygiene following on you know growing scientific knowledge on the causes of diseases. So, these factors has largely contributed in the faster decline in the mortality rate. 
there is also an improvement in the food supply by agricultural revolution. So, we have also better med medical know-how, we also have a better agriculture know-how, where when we have experienced agricultural revolution, we have ex grown more and more food crops. And there is also better sanitation facilities, there is also better water supply, hygienic water supply. There is also an you know betterment in the transport and communication system that is also leading to a better uh, conditions of uh, demographic change during the stage 2. And at the same time we have experienced a decrease in the infant mortality rate. So, these are the different characteristics as well as the reasons for the stage 2. In stage 3 as you can see that this is known as late expanding a stage. What is the characteristic of this particular stage? This particular stage is characterized by we have already seen that the mortality rate has declined in the previous stage stage 2, but here in this particular stage stage 3 for the first time we have experienced the decline in the fertility rate as well. So, in stage 3 a society experience a decline in the birth rate. So, this is what is the main characteristics of the stage 3. Now, since the birth rate has started declining and this was the typical characteristic of the 19th century in the developing in the developed countries. Uh, this particular stage is still continuing in many of the developing countries including India. So, in India also we have experienced uh, you know declining population rate, we have experienced declining birth rate, we have already experienced the decline in the death rate and now we are in somewhere in the stage 3. But the demographic De advanced countries, demographic developed countries, in particularly the western world, particularly the Nordic countries such as Sweden, Norway and all, Germany, all these countries have you know ex already crossed these stages. Now, what is the factors that is leading to the decline in the birth rate? That is a very important. Now, in this stage 2, we have seen that the mortality rate has contributed to the decline in uh, the advancement in the medical sciences contributed into the decline in the mortality rate. Here in this stage, in this stage 3, now people and parents are more confident that their children, those who are taking birth are not dying. So, this particular change in thinking has led to the decline into the fertility rate in this stage 3. So, now the parents are more confident that they can have fewer children and still they can survive. So, this particular confidence of having you know surviving children leads to the decline in the fertility rate in this stage 3. And this particular stage is, is also you know uh, uh, characterize uh, have their repercussions on the A6 pyramid. Now, here you can see that the death rate was already had already gone down. Now, in this stage 3, you can see the rapid decline in the birth rate. The birth rate started da going down, but by that particular time, the population base was already very high to produce more and more children. So, even if the birth rate was declining, already the population bro uh, the population between the re in the reproductive age group was so high that that led to the population growth and that is why we can see that the population is still growing at a very faster rate. So, <clears throat> now you can see in the stage 3, we have a declining birth rate, we have already uh, we already had this declined death rate and as a result you can see here, we have a very broad or you can say very high proportion of population in the lower age group of say 20, 25. Now, here in this particular graph you can see that the population has was very high at the la last two age categories, but in this part in this particular graph you can see that the, pop the, the proportion of the population has even gone up into the further age cohorts say 10 to 14, 15 to 19 and 20 to 24. So, this is what is the major, major characteristics of stage 3. Uh, this particular stage as I said is also characterized or also called as, uh, the, the pop total population increase in this particular stage is basically largely contributed to the population momentum. And as I said what is this population momentum? Population momentum is nothing, but since the population base has already gone very high 
and the reproductive age group population has also gone, gone very high. So, even if they have a lower birth rate, they will have a large population increase. So, this is what is known as the population momentum. Now, again here this in this particular uh, graph that uh, you can see here, uh, this is represented about the Mexico in 1895 to 2000. Now, you can see here again the birth rate and death rate. In Sweden, we have seen the fluctuating birth rate and death rate in the early period, but in Mexico, we can see that there is not much fluctuation during the 1895 period, but still the death rate was very low than the birth rate, but uh, there came a time after say uh, 1975, Mexico started experiencing the decline in the fertility rate. And you can see the black line that is representing the growth in the, uh, the total population that is still increasing at that particular. So, this is again a population of the Mexico that was represented for the period of 1895 to 2000. Now, this particular graph I have already shown about the Mexico where we have a large, we have a large uh, uh, population base and this um, youth population is uh, having a very large proportion. Uh, now, the population is also, the proportion of the population is also increasing in the working age group of more than 15 years, but still we have a very lesser elderly population of 60 years and above population. Now, what are the reasons for the stage 3? Uh, basically, during this particular stage, there was a larger or there is a very increased use of contraception. There was an in, in, uh, invention of several contraception methods. There was a very large access to the contraception method and all these contraceptive or fertility control measures led to the decline in the, into the, in the fertility rate. And that is what is the basic reason behind the decline in the fertility rate in this particular period. There was also a reason which I cited earlier that the parents had, had become more confident that the child is surviving more and more and that is how you know they can have a better, even if they are having fewer children they will survive and that is why they can opt, opt for the, uh, opt for lower uh, uh, number of children. There is a St uh, there are several studies which have suggested that this, if uh, infant mortality rate falls to 70 or below, then the fertility rates start declining very rapidly. So, this particular factor was also experienced during stage 3 where we, we had experienced the decline in the infant mortality rate and that is how, you know, uh, the fertility rate has taken, uh, has dipped below or has declined or nose dived. So, in this particular stage in uh, stage 3 was also characterized, characterized by higher level of industrialization, mechanization, uh, wealth of the people has also increased, material possessions has taken over, uh, there was also a you know a desire for <coughs> very little desire for the larger families, the uh, equality among women was also proposed uh, you know uh, propagated during this particular stage female literacy has increased, their employment level has increased and as a result the female themselves have become conscious that they will have to restrict their children if they want to get into the job market. Uh, if you know uh, those uh, working uh, women they also try to you know postpone the marriage, they want to delay their marriage so that you know they can uh, you know contribute to the uh, uh, economy of their family, uh, contribute to the economy of their society. So, these are all the characteristics of the stage 3. Now, we come to the stage 4. Now, what happens in stage 4? We had seen the decline in the birth rate, we had already seen the decline in the death rate. At the stage 4, both birth rate and death rate comes to again at equal level from the higher level to the lower level. So, now at the one hand in stage 8, stage 1, both birth rate and death rate were equal but at a higher level. Now, at a stage 4, both birth rate and death rate have gone down, but at a lower level. So, this is the basic characteristic, uh, you know, uh, basic uh, characteristics of this stage 4. Now, that is why it is also known as low fluctuating population, because there is no fluctuation in the birth rate and death rate. Now, birth rates and death rates are also all time low. You, for the first time, you can see in the stage 4 that birth rate and death rate was very, very low and in some cases it, is, it has gone even below the replacement level. Now, this age structure 
uh, which we have seen in the uh, population pyramid that has also become older. Now more and more people are surviving, the life expectancy at this particular stage has gone up more than 60, 70 and that is why the population have started uh, you know surviving for more number of years in their lifetime and that is why we have we are experiencing more and more aging population at this particular stage. So, this age structure has also become older, which I will just show you in the next slide. Uh, population is also becoming highly industrialized and urbanized, more and more technology is coming up, more and more technological know-how is uh, getting, communication system has improved very much, the, <coughs> the you know uh, transportation and communication system both have increased. There is a deliberate, deliberate controls on family size by the parents. Now, literacy and education attainment is also very high. Degree of labor specialization is also very high. And as you can see in this particular uh, population pyramid of Sweden, you can see that the population over 60 years for the first time has gone higher. And the population base, the lower population base you can see that has declined, whereas the upper population working age group and the senior age group of 60 and years that has experienced a very steep rise. So, you can say this is the characteristics of the fourth stage of the demographic transition wherein we see the lower young age population and higher old age population. So, this is one of the character and this is also these are all the characteristics of the stage 4. Now, in stage 4 as I said this is a low fluctuating stage and you can see the stage 4 graph. You can see earlier we have seen that the population base was at lower and birth rate and death rate was on the upper side. Now, here in stage 4 you can see that the population grow, uh, population size is at the upper side where the birth rate and death rate has gone at the bottom size. So, this is what is the basic difference between the stage 4 and stage, stage 1. So, from pre modern uh, you know from agrarian time or say from the pre-modern time to the modern time this is the uh, transition that is taking place between the demographic parameters of birth and death rate and as and when this demographic parameters of birth rate and death rate is taking change in the time span similarly the society is also experiencing a change in their socio-economic and demographic status. Now, question is, what is there in the stage 5? There are very few people who have, uh, there are people who suggest that there are stage 5 also, but there are people who suggest that no, the demographic transition ends by stage 4. But still, stage 5, since it has been advocated by several people, we have seen that there are certain countries which are experiencing the stage 5 conditions, and that is why I thought of you know putting the stage 5 characteristics as well. And here as you can see what happens in stage 5, the society during the stage 5 which is the most modern or the most recent stage in the demographic, uh, uh, demographically developed states, you can see that population has already declined and it has declined to the level of negative growth rate. So, the population rate of growth of the population has declined a lot rather it has gone even in the negative. Now, as a result in the stage 5 we also see that there is a very large level of aging population as you can experience in Germany, as you can experience in Japan. Now, there the population over and above the age 60 is nearly 20 percent, 22 percent. Now, what happens because of this? The social expenditure as I was discussing in earlier theories that the social expenditure on rearing children, providing education health to the children now completely changes because there are now fewer children in the society. Now that particular social expenditure from the children moves towards the social expenditure on the elderly population. Now the, we need to have very different setup, very different infrastructure for rearing the children as well as rearing the aging population. So, society has to spend more and more now on the aging population and they have to spend less and less on the child population or say the younger population. Now, at this particular stage both fertility and mortality almost stabilizes at a very low rate. There however, since there are more number of old age population, so there are issues of old age morbidities 
which requires special infrastructural arrangements to tackle with that because old age population have to have better medical facilities, have to have better medical, me, medical infrastructure to take care of their senile health problems. And that is why there will be more morbidity issues as the age advances and there that is why they need more and more you know uh, uh, health in, uh, infrastructure in terms of the aging population. Uh, as I already I have discussed about the reversal of the social security system from the child to the old population. Now marriage is also increases at this particular stage. There are instances where the people are marrying even 30 after 35 years or maybe in 40 years. So the marriage is also increases in many of these demographically advanced stages. Now society has become highly technological driven. You can see the robots have come up, robots are taking place in these societies to handle or to taking uh, uh, to take care of several things. So these are all the characteristics about the stage 5. Now this is what has been shown here uh, with the help of a graph that we have just put a question mark whether this demographic stage happens and if happens what happens the population start declining and that is why it is still dotted. Now what happens you can see here the typical uh, you know uh, age structure of this uh, this is basically the step where you can see the you know increase in the age uh, this is the base uh, actual uh, de uh, demographic depiction on the population pyramid of Italy during 1998 when you can see the, the middle part the adult population as well as the elderly population their ratio has gone much higher whereas they have very little little children in their society. And what happens as a result since you have a lesser number of children at your base those children will grow up and they will again there will be very lesser people in the reproductive age period. Now because of the lesser children lesser people in the reproductive age period the population will further decline. So there will come a time when you will experience the negative population growth population growth rate and then you will have a fall in the population as well. So it is not necessarily that population will keep on increasing and increasing and the, there will come a point, there will come a time, there will come you know a stage where you will ex start experiencing experience the decline in the population, uh, population also. So this is what are the different stages of demographic transition and as you can see I have tried to explain four five different stages of the demographic transition we have also tried to explain about the characteristics of different uh, uh, stages of the demographic transitions. Uh, now let us discuss some of the criticism. Now as I said uh, this particular demographic transition theory is one of the most advanced demographic transition in fact most popular you can say uh, popular uh, demographic theory. Uh, which is available with us till date. Now uh, issue is as you all know no theory is perfect. Every theory is built up with the help of certain propositions with the help of certain things keeping constant and as a result what happens the population theories not only population theories any theory for that matter have certain criticisms as we have seen in the Malthusian population also, we have also seen in the Neo-Malthusian theories, we have also seen in regard to the Marx, all these scholars, all these philosophers, all these economists they gave their brilliant theories to us but all of them were criticized. So similarly this demographic transition was also criticized much. Now how and why this demographic transition was criticized. This demographic transition theory was criticized largely for one of the major reason. Now in demography we understand that the increase in the population or the growth in the population is not only a matter of birth rate and death rate. There is also a component of migration into it and because of that particular component of migration the when we take all the three components together of the birth rate, death rate and a component of migration then only we can discuss about the population growth of a society. Now this demographic transition theory has completely ignored the migration factor into it. This migration thing in any society as you can 
understand that the population growth takes place. Why? Because when there is a difference between the more the number of people taking birth, number of people dying. So, if you calculate the difference that is called the natural increase in population, but that is not the total increase in the population. What is the total increase in the population? Total increase in the population when you add migration also the net migration into the population increase, then you get the total increase in the population. So, what happens? This particular demographic transition theory has not discussed anything or not considered the migration factor into it. And that is why this particular factor has been criticized a lot. So, on the base, uh, because of the migration factor ignored, this demographic transition theory was largely criticized. Now, what are the other criticism that this theory experiences? Now, this theory has been blamed that this particular theory is largely valid for the dem demographically developed states. If you consider it in demographically developing states, so in that particular case you will find that this particular theory is not behaving properly or say for example, it is not you know exactly restricting to the different stages or different characteristics of the stages what demographic theory has proposed. So, that is also a reason why this demographic transition theory was criticized. So, we understand that, that uh, Thomson create or Thomson proposed this theory by looking at the data of 200 years in the demographical developed society or say for the example western societies and then he brought up the, his ideas on the demographic transition. But in the he he was not aware of the demo, how the demographically developing societies are taking place. So, but by and large if you see that the basic propositions of the demographic theory is still getting applied in even in the developing societies. Now, uh, there is another criticism about this demographic transition that this demographic transition though tells us that after this stage, this stage will come, after stage 1, stage 2 will come, after stage 2, stage 3 will come, but demographic transition theory will not give you an exact time under which you will get the idea that what how much time one stage will take for any society. So, that was also one of the reasons for you know uh, one of the reason for of criticism on the demographic transition theory. So, I uh, will stop here to attend few questions if there are any. Okay. So, demographic theory just focus about that uh, difference between uh, uh, yeah, the measures have been taken uh, to controlling the death rate and promoting the birth rates. This is such the yeah. cause, the uh, latest stage as you said that, yeah. that was the main reason. So, why cr uh, criticism you talked about the criticism is also uh, uh, location centric or say the uh, uh, worldwide phenomena is yes, some uh, regional centric. Uh, basically as I said the demographic transition theory, yeah. uh, uh, I said that it was largely developed into the developing developed societies yeah. and each society has certain characteristics. So, it is very difficult for any society to exactly adopt to the demographic transition model. But still demographic transition gives you certain characteristics of a stage which every society <coughs> sorry which every society experiences. Now, as I said that in the developing societies not all the developing societies have actually crossed all the stages that was proposed in the demographic transition theory and that is why that is one of the reason why it was criticized that demographic transition did not consider it is not applicable in the developing societies. Okay. So, uh, how one can overcome this situation? Uh, basically, it is not about overcoming, it is basically about how you are applying it to the different situations. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said in India, we are still into the stage 3, we are still to come to the stage 4. Mm -hmm. But there are societies which have already crossed all the stages of the demographic transition. As I said, there are four or five stages in this demographic transition theory 
and there are countries like say for example germany it has crossed all the four five stages but there are countries in the world which is still in the primitive stages in the stage 1 stage 2 if you go into the remotest part of the africa or in some of the you know most uh, tribal dominated region you can find the still the same stage 1 conditions there so basically each societies are different and each societies you know reflects or display some different kind of patterns different kind of stages but yes by and large the propositions that was proposed by the demographic transition still hold and is still valid okay so uh, uh, the stage transition uh, you talked about it also takes time uh, there are certain prerequisites for that yeah uh, basically uh, the demographic transition theory yeah. it says that once a society will cross one stage then only it will enter into the second stage once it will cross the second stage then it will enter into the third stage once it will so so and so forth so it will go on you know one after another one stage and another stage and that was also one of the reason of the criticism that not every society experience that particular is uh, that particular pattern of a stage transition mm -hmm. not all the societies moved from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3 to stage 4 and also the time duration of crossing from one stage to second stage second stage to third stage was also not very clear and that is why uh, the, uh, this particular demographic transition was also very much criticized. Okay, so criticism is also valid here, uh, means take into account all the prevalent yes. uh, concern and the problems. Exactly. Basic, uh, the basic criticism which is, which is very much valid is mm -hmm. a neglect of the migration factor into this particular theory. Okay. As we know, as I have already explained that the migration factor is very important factor in the population increase and we know that the population growth takes place not only population increase is not only the difference between the birth rate and death rate, but it is also, you know, a, 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 a combination of the difference between the birth rate and death rate which is known as natural increase of the population and migration. So, if you combine the two, then only you have a population growth of a society of a region. And so, therefore, just to say that there is a difference between a birth rate and death rate and that is why the population growth is taking place. So, that is not a very valid, you know, uh, uh, valid um, uh, idea and that particular mig neglect of migration into the theory is uh, one of the major point of criticism. So, migration from one region to another uh, that is a uh, cause of growth only when uh, two country when counted, but the uh, inner uh, inside the country migration uh, they can not be uh, uh, we can count as you see uh, for example yeah. for instance to just to cite an example mm -hmm. uh, I can say that the po suppose if you are seeing the increase in the population of Delhi mm -hmm. now what happens the increase in the population of Delhi is not only the result of the difference between the birth rate and death rate that is taking place in Delhi. As long as we are not considering the migration that is taking place into the country, migration means the net migration, those who are going out of Delhi and those who are coming into the Delhi, the difference between the two. So, we have a you know a natural increase of the population which is the difference between birth rate and death rate and there is a net migration rate which is the difference between the emigration and immigration. So, when you, when you combine the two, the natural increase as well as the net migration, then you have the total population figure mm -hmm. and that is why, the, uh, then you have the total increase, you know, the total increase in the population. Okay. So, so uh, but overall, uh, when we count the population of the country, the, uh, it does not uh, matter. It does matter. When we count the population of the country, we also count the because migration. The counting will be the same, no? No, but we have the international people also in our country. Similarly, our people also go to the yeah, international that market. Is to from one territory to other. Yeah. Then it's okay. But uh, when the inner uh, migration from suppose from Bihar, UP to uh, Delhi, uh, so Surat, the, yeah, uh, Mumbai. Yeah. So the, when we count the population of the entire country, that will remain the same. That is not a problem of, uh, you can say that. The, 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 total population of that any hmm. society or hmm. any particular region say for Bihar hmm. or UP when you are trying to calculate the total population of that particular uh, state you take into account the migration factor also. Okay. Okay. So, so that is how it is uh, calculated. Okay. 
so well friends with this word we conclude the lecture i thank all of you for watching the lecture and on behalf i thank dr abhay kumar for giving such a wonderful lecture thank you very much